Okay, alright, that's what it is. Yep, 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 yep. It didn't start it, it didn't start it, it didn't start it. It didn't start it. We're here, man. Probably about 30 seconds to get it on together. Barbershop Story Podcast. The show is episode 108. Episode 108. Let me see, 108. Yeah, we're going to make sure we got it all right. 108. 108. Come on in. Come on in. Don't be number one. Come I on in. I thought Wobble was 108, but it might, it might be a 108. Huh? So I don't know why I thought Wobble was 108, but, you know, it, it, it always seemed like it's a number behind or a number in front. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're about right. <laughs> Bro. Yeah, it's somewhere, it's somewhere around there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, y'all, come on in. Come yes, on in. Sir. Come on in. We are live. Barbershop Story, the podcast, episode 108. The entertainment industry, we talking about a little bit of it, independently. That's what we talking about. The entertainment industry, independently. Yeah, that's, that's serious thing, you know. Serious yeah, thing, serious it. thing, serious thing. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get the thing. Crunk on up, crunk on up. Barbershop Story, the podcast, episode 108. The entertainment industry independently. And I bet you saw him saying, man, what are these folks over here talking about with this shit right here? Well, we're going to come over here and we're, been, we're about to tell you, man, all from yeah. our rappers, our singers, our dancers, the folks who do backflips, kick worms, whatever you want to do in this entertainment industry, man, it's always decided this independently that nobody ever talk about. Well, when they talk about it, I don't think they really go in depth. So I think we'll do Getting it today. Get it off the ground, for real. We'll do it, we'll do it here today. What's happening now? Get it off the ground. I am comedic narrator, Benny Mac, and this fellow right here, he'll introduce hey. Vi himself. Hey, you know, there's no nose, and we keep some info for you, man. Uh, we're going to grace over this, this such a matter that you just got through talking about. Yeah. You know, uh, as far as we know it, uh, you know, getting things off the ground, independently. As yep. far as in the entertainment goes, um, I believe we, you know, then qualified to speak on that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At least, at least, at least you know, a few yes, levels sir. in it, a few levels in it. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I, I think it's interesting, man, cause, because I, I think that uh, a lot of cities, they're dealing with the same thing when they're dealing with their independent artists. You know, you hear a lot of them say they, they can't make it, people ain't looking at them, mm-hmm. people don't fool with them, they ain't getting the opportunities. You uh, what else you hear that um, uh, hear the Illuminati? You know, you hear all kind of stuff when it when it come about it. But I think it's um uh, not a, a a direct format, but I think it's some basics that artists have to follow in order to be able to move forward and get noticed and get people to know who they are and respecting they they uh, they talent and what they're bringing to this uh, entertainment yeah. industry. Agree, agree, yeah. man, agree. I was trying to share that. I, I, I thought I was looking at something else that was a store. But, uh, yeah, agree, man. Um, uh, we in an era now where, uh, you know, you got phones, you walking around with cameras all day. Um, you walking around, you know, you got computers. Uh, like I said, uh, people shooting videos at will. I mean, just at the drop of a hat, everybody in the media. I mean, uh, as long as you present yourself out here correctly and, and uh, with the, the channels that they have to be able to get to it now, mm-hmm. it's very obtainable. Um, so when you say present yourself correctly, yeah. I guess what what would your definition of what would your, what would your sites be on doing it correctly as far as for an independent artist? Because a lot of them, I think, with the internet, what you said, I think is very true. But... I think it's, it's kind of a gift and a curse, though, mm. because it's like it's a gift because you get an opportunity to see a lot of people get the likes, the views, the money, the comments, and all that. But the downside, a lot of them have short-lived careers, you know, and I think short-lived careers, not because they, they're they not talented. I just think they missed too many steps in actually learning what the business was all about before they obtained the level of uh, visibility. Yeah, a lot of the, I mean, a lot of that, that's true. Um, from an uh, onlooker standpoint, uh, I think a lot of that is true because um, these days, you know, pretty much, you know, uh, there's uh, 
got an ear for music and an eye for talent, and, and, and mm -hmm. we all love to be entertained, so we all just strolling all day anyway, you know, seeing what's the latest and what's the hottest, who's sharing what, what everybody talking about, who hot. You know, whether it be a, 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 a funny punchline, somebody sharing, or, or a short. Yeah. You know, because shorts are real popular now, you know, mm -hmm. um, in, in, in uh, videoing. And you, we kind of talking scattered, rappers, you know, mm -hmm. uh, actors, comedians, all this stuff can be done independently now. So uh, we we got to get in the mindset of, 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 of that if we're already not, that, that it can't happen independently. And when you're doing it independently, uh, it don't mean that you don't have to be professional or you shouldn't be professional yeah. even though you're doing it independently mm -hmm. because that's still, I think, going to be the quickest way or the, 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 the best path to prolonging a career in whatever you're trying to do mm -hmm. as well as uh, just being that, that uh, what they say, first impression is the last impression. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, when people see professionalism off the top, Mm -hmm. That pretty much give them the confidence to say, okay, I'm finna, I'm finna check this person out. Okay, I wanna go check for them, or okay, I seen something funny for them. I'm finna refer it to somebody else or share it with somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it was professional looking, and even if it ain't all, you know, it, professional don't mean it has to be in a certain box. It just means the presentation of it. Okay, you done a video? Can I go find other work? that you've done from that one video. Mm -hmm. uh, is that video licensed and tagged right? You know, to you know, mm -hmm. to where it um the revenue or maybe the uh the proceeds from it are coming back to you, you mm -hmm. know, or, or coming back to the, the 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 target that you're trying to get it to come back to. Yep. So you know a lot of that stuff goes into it and 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 we have talents. We sing, we see, we hear, we like I said, we run up on just by just by merely going down a rabbit hole. Sometimes we run up on all type of different talent, man. Folks that yeah. tap dance and, and riding on the side, I mean, all kind of stuff, you know. But uh, I think the most thing about it is finding that channel, and when you do find the channel, light that channel up, but be professional mm -hmm. about it, where where it can all track back to the right. No source. Yeah, I think um, I think well, one thing I know that talent is not the problem, mm -hmm. but looking at it hindsight, I like the time when people actually had to go through artist development. Yeah, and that's with comics, that's with singers, that's with rappers, that's with all of them because it actually made you hone your skill. It yeah. made you actually lock into what you was actually doing. Mm -hmm. Like now, you got people. Sometimes they can put you in a place too quick. And it can kind of give you a false sense of where you really I are. That last week, like, like for an example, and I'm gonna speak on the artists, and this with the comics and all. A lot of them don't even understand how to get paid. You know, like uh, some people think that okay, I got a nice song, or I can make a couple folks laugh, uh, I can sing and woo the crowd. Yeah. They be thinking they can go in and require all that money, but the real biggest thing though is that uh, I think that. You have to be able to put asses in a seat. Yeah. I don't give a damn how funny you are, how good you sing, how great you rap. Now, you can ask for whatever thine desire. <laughs> you can ask for that. But the realistic part is that most people look at what's your sellability. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, uh, come in. like I don't encounter artists where they say, um, like some people say, hey, man, let me get you some flowers, let me get you some tickets. And they feel like, man, I ain't got to sell no tickets. Yeah. I ain't got to put out no flowers. I don't have to uh, put it on my page. I agree. Yeah. I agree. You don't have to, but it also affect when people say, hey, let's call K1. I'm like, man, K1, he don't, he don't want to cooperate. Or, nah, fuck, we ain't going to get K1. Yeah. And a lot of artists don't realize that, man. You Like, when people call you to book you for a show, there's nothing shorter than an honor. I don't give a damn what people say until you just done got over that hump. But there's nothing shorter than an honor because... Every one of you is at least a hundred more just like you, or better. Yeah. So when what what's gonna separate you from these other artists? Yeah. Are you are you cool? Are you workable? Are you manageable? Can you communicate? Mm -hmm. Do you understand what these people are saying? Do you understand why they paid you what they paid you? Are you appreciative of that? Mm -hmm. 
people look at that because I know I do. When I book folks at that start home, I look yeah. at how, how they're handling their business, man. And I feel like uh, with, with artists, you got artists out here, man, that they ain't finna post the fly or the show. Yeah. Now, when you're not on the fly, I kind of understand that. But even then, even if you're not on the fly, if somebody gave you an opportunity to be a part of it, why wouldn't you say, are you worried about them making money? Yeah. Are you concerned that they may make some money? I'm like, what's, well, what's the deal in it? Like, for any show I get on, I'm doing promo like it's mine. Because, uh-huh. well, shit, hey, I appreciate the opportunity. Well, we all, uh, I'd be reminded that, that Bob Shop Stories, episode 108, we talking about independent, yep. you know, in the time entertainment. So and, and starting from ground up, mm-hmm. uh, or wherever you are, you know, in it. You know, you, you may have a bigger budget than somebody yep. else got starting on the ground. Yep. But at the end of the day, I feel like obligations are a little different in independent entertainment. Oh yeah. Because uh like you said, okay, we'll take the uh, the, the the situation where we was talking about uh off the camera uh, one time uh, about uh, the deals that go on in the, in the industry where, okay, well, these, these uh, big actors or artists or whatever may say, I'm not obligated to do this. Mm-hmm. All, I'm, all I was obligated to do was be in the movie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But to me, uh, or play my part in the movie, know my lines, you know, but to me, when you're independent, I feel like, okay, you you can view it like that, you know, and all that depends on your draw and, 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 and yeah. what, you know, you may be a, a, a high-tier independent mm-hmm. person, you know what I'm saying? Well, okay, your draw is a little stronger than you having to get out there and really push and push and push. But, you know, that still don't, you know, uh, 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 disqualify you from being able to share a flyer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You would a, think. Well, see, it, you know, that, that's a whole different thing to like, it because it costs nothing. Yeah. Now, when it comes to a point where somebody's saying, hey, man, look, I want you to help me promote my show, but you got to fly here, drive there, yeah. do this, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when I think it's like, hey. I need a budget. Yeah, yeah you got to yeah. at least cover my gas. Yeah. You know, my labor, I might can give you that free, but at least cover the expenses I may have to incur. But I think on this independent level, man, it, it's a beautiful field, man. And I love seeing people have the opportunity to be able to get money. But my biggest concern is that, I don't know what it means when people say ignorance is bliss, but it sounds like it would match a few of these situations. Because, That's button free, man. Because, cause, man, it's like, like for an example, this is how I look at a show. If, if I sell 150 tickets per show, at twenty dollars a ticket, for an example, twenty dollars times one fifty. What are we looking at? Three thousand dollars, minus all your expenses, minus you know your your talent. Mm. All right, minus your promotion, all that good stuff, and you got to get paid too, or at least you want to. All right, what now now let's just say if we put Sam on the show mm. and them tickets go from one fifty to three hundred, mm. then all Sam on the show, Sam on the show, Sam on the show. So now we done went up an extra three thousand. Yeah. Oh, that's gonna want me on that bitch. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the formula to me would be, you can get you at least twenty to twenty five percent of what you brought in. Somewhere around there, give or take some, a little more, some a little less. But let's just say twenty percent. If you brought in three thousand dollars, you get twenty percent of that. If you ask for five six hundred for the show, mm-hmm. nobody would have an argument. No, ain't nobody. Argue. Nobody would. And I probably argue. had them analytics before I booked you. Exactly. Know that you had that type of that you can do that. Yeah. So what what people don't understand, like when I book comedians on the show, I look at it like this. I see a gem in you just because I'm from this city and because I'm independent. So yeah. it may be say, you know what, I'm a book such and such. I may give you 50, I may give you 75, I might give you 100. But look at it like this. Let's go back to that same <laughs> that same scale. All right, I bring somebody into a show that won't even share a flower. Mm. Let's just say if six people came to see you at $20 a ticket, that's $120. If I use the 20% rule of $120, mm. I owe you $24. I owe you $24. That's if we use a rule, but honestly, what people don't realize, shit, a lot of these independent shows, you lucky if you even get paid. 
Because I'm talking about actually setting tickets. A lot of these folks ain't even setting tickets, bro. Being independent in a non-draw, yeah. you, you're really fortunate to walk away with anything. Um, I think now your talents are worth whatever you're working toward. Yeah, but, when you get there. But but but, <laughs> but uh, to be uh, given a chance to be on a platform that you normally wouldn't be on one, mm -hmm. and even one that you would as far as open mic, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, at a, just say a, a club or a bar or, or something like that, or hell, even when you say I'm in here, to be invited out to, to something like that is still uh, an honor as a person that's trying to, you know, to polish on. their craft up and move mm -hmm. on and actually go, you know, take it somewhere. Um, so, yeah, you should be appreciative enough to at least share a fly and let your people know that you're gonna yeah. that you're gonna be here or that you're gonna do this, you shouldn't be totally dependent on the promotion of uh, of, of, of said company that you that you're doing the show for, or said entity that you're doing the show for. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they should be working too. That's yeah. probably what attracted you to say, "I want to get on that stage, that that platform that yeah, they exactly. that they put together." But see, but then you have to, you have to, what is it? But say? you want your folks down. You have, you have to look at it too, like this too, man. A lot of these cats, they're not really in this entertainment for that. Yeah. They in it because it look good for the moment. Mm -hmm. Because a person who really into something, they, they would definitely understand that. Because I look at it in so many different ways. And then when we go to talking about the pay, people don't look at promotion and marketing like that's pay. Like if somebody, right. like, like for an example, at the Start On Comedy Club, if y'all familiar with the Start On Comedy Club, it's one of the largest clubs in the country, probably top five. And I bring independent shows that two, three times a month. So, all right, so here it is. If you go to the Start On website, shout out to Bruce, he's a great guy. That's who owned the club. Um, when he put headliners on the show, boom, Sammy No Nose here, the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, when you see that fly, you know the only person you see on that fly? Mm. Sammy motherfucking no no. You don't crazy. see the headline, I mean, you don't see the feature, you don't see the host, you don't see the guest spot, you don't see any of that. All you see is your name and big bold letters and your picture on that bitch smile. Me, when I looked at the independent thing, I think about promotion, marketing, and all that. Yeah. So me, I choose to tell my fly, man, add that person, add yeah. that person, add that person. And then when I sit there and I add those people, and then you get silly shit up out of them, it's almost like shit. I wasted some fly space, bro. Cause I'm, at the end of the day, I'm the one saying these units, man. You know, and that ain't saying it in a in a bad or arrogant way. But I'm like, man, I, like ladies, I do understand my worth. Yeah. <laughs> I understand my worth. So it's like when I hear those cats do that, it's like, bro. First of all, I ain't got to put you on this hoe. Yeah. You know, I could just say, hey, man, Benny Mac and them presents. A fun ass comedy show because I'm the one who who moving the units. But me looking at it like, bro, you put these artists on here, then boom, put something in their pocket yeah. to make let them know that it is hope that folks will treat you right. Unfortunately, them be some of the ones who act the worst in this shit because it's almost like you really put their cart before their horse. Yeah. They don't even see how they got there. They just thinking they just running. Cause like I said, it, it's done like that with with um in the past with other. Uh, Entities that 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 had platforms because they're pretty much. I'm not gonna say keeping you because can't nobody keep you anywhere, but they're mm -hmm. presenting you on on an amateur status. Mm -hmm. That's why you're not probably on those flies uh, from those instances. But uh, you got somebody that's actually trying to get give you facial res recognition now. Yeah, that's a whole difference because you can even sometimes that can shoot you in the foot. Yeah. Well, somebody may recognize your face on there and say, man, that joke ain't funny, man, I ain't going to know yeah. that. Man, he got something, something on him, man, man. Some people can just easily do that as they yeah. can That's by true. seeing those faces, you know what I'm saying? That's so true. Uh, it, 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 um, it should be viewed differently um, as far as sharing something, especially you on the fly, you wouldn't want to share that, you wouldn't want to. Let people know that you wouldn't even want to. You, I, I probably would want to sell some tickets to make sure I got a little base yeah, sitting up in that song. Up, yeah. Personally, you know. But see, but that's rapping, what, singing, yeah, comedy, yeah, whatever. And see, that's why I yeah. say it out loud. That's why Ben and Matt stays working, because whoever booked me, 
I always tell her, man, shoot me a fly. Yeah. I got professional headshots ready. Mm -hmm. Then, matter of fact, matter of fact, before I even say that, you got some of these niggas be requiring all this shit, and these niggas take, got pictures with a kitchen sink behind them. Look it up. Pictures with a motherfucking refrigerator behind them. Picture and I gotta crop that girl out the picture. Man, nigga, yeah. nigga, you should be getting shit. You should be paying to be on this hoe. Yeah. It's almost like the professionalism ain't there, but you want all the shit that come with professionalism. It don't work that way. Now, back to what I was saying about me staying booked. Anytime I, hey, y'all got a fly, y'all got this, I'm gonna promote the fly. Some of the budget they give me, I'm gonna use toward a sponsor that. And I'm gonna shoot a video. So it's almost like shit, hey, I want these folks to win. Mm -hmm. I want these folks to see the value that, man, we put in there. It's about 20 niggas showing up for this nigga, man. Yeah. Some of these city folks charging $20, $30 for tickets. So if you had 20 people show up from where you were, they'd have picked up an extra $600 on yeah, the right. show. That ain't too many promoters turn that down. That's why some places I'm going to go yearly. Mm -hmm. Some places I'm going to go twice a year. Because they can see the value in what you bring opposed to you thinking you just that goddamn funny. Work, that fine, work. Folk just got to have you. Everybody got to have your weak ass, man. Because it, every city, every state, every town got some funny ass individuals. White, black, Mexican, short, tall, midgets. Yeah, all that shit. It's funny folks everywhere. Yeah. What separates you? Uh, folks that can sing, dance. You know, I'm talking about. worm, all that shit everywhere. I'm talking about all that <laughs> shit. For real, man. Hey, ain't no doubt, but um, it, it is um, I sure don't want to shortchain other areas of entertainment in the city, city when I say um, cause you know I enjoy uh this era of music in the city as far as the heights is reaching. Oh yeah. You know, even yeah. K One can tell you uh these artists reaching new, some some new heights in the city as far as the the uh, the just knowing them, the uh, what, what the notice, the notice, notability, just 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 knowing that they out here, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Okay, little such and such, or such and such from this side of town, or such and and, and, and uh, I don't want to call any names specifically because uh, you know I don't remember everybody that you know I don't want to get no mix up, but uh, it's just a lot going on with artists in the city now, and you got the visuals, uh, you got music on on. Uh, Different streaming platforms you can reach. You got artists, uh, music being placed in different films. I mean, uh, Birmingham artist scene in Alabama in itself, uh, artist scene is really stepping into the the era uh, and joining in with the rest of the South, creating a scene mm -hmm. around it. But I, I feel like um, a market still has to be built. Yeah, we got to understand. Uh, just like we spend money with the DJs for parties, with the uh, producers to go record the music, mm -hmm. we had to. We, hey, you, you got to call your partner over there and, 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 and shoot him a little something for getting on the, on the song. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shoot your partner a little something for making the beat. When you on, when you when you out uh, at an open mic or somebody put you on some new, new music, you be like, okay, I think I want, I may want, you know what I'm saying? Uh, do a song on one of his tracks or. Uh, Get this artist to 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 feature on one of my songs because he hot over here on this side of town. If I get him, I know I can reach. You no, know, be ready to spend a little chain with them folks. Nobody ain't well, saying what the scale or what you have to pay. Or some hell of a swap would, out. Would, 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 would be, but the work had to be swapped out evenly. Mm -hmm. uh, with somebody who who's beneficial, and then you know. I, it ain't nothing wrong. I'm here just saying, basically, it ain't nothing wrong with having to pay if that's what somebody requires. It shouldn't be, man, yeah. that nigga tried to charge me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because if, if, if you out here spending money on studio time, spending money placing your music uh, in different platforms to get it heard, you out here working tirelessly, staying up to show up at open mics or, or shows to perform, and, and, uh, and, 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 for people to, to hear your stuff so they can go back and stream it and, and, and further listen to your stuff and mm -hmm. give you the respect online you deserve. Yeah, you deserve compensation if, if you if you have your stuff professionally ordered in that way mm -hmm. and 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 um and that's what you require. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be looked at as, oh he won't do it with me, so okay, all right, I got him or he hating or you know, um, not to say that Birmingham music scene is all about that. I don't want to be mistaken. 
And I repeat that. Not to say that Birmingham music scene is all about that, because it shouldn't be. And I, when, when the, the era I come from, man, it wasn't about all that, because we, we all got along on all sides of town. We went, met up at these record pools all throughout the state. And it, it, it wasn't too much of, it of it wasn't too much of no drama that I can really remember. You know, you might have had an argument about who was in line for, but it wasn't really no spill back mm. about a lot of artists on artist stuff. Now you making call up, you know, call and shell something if you feel like that if I'm wrong. But I don't remember a lot of drama with artists back then. Uh, we got to get past some of the drama and some of the the he say she say and some of the online keyboard G stuff to get to the, the the channels where we can make money and create a market and keep the market going. Some have a market for themselves already. Yeah. They may be laying low in the cut because I ain't, I ain't going to shortchange them either. They yeah. may be able to create that stream of revenue for them. They may be moving outside of the state lines and we don't even know about them yet and yeah. getting ready to spill back in. It's always so many, like you said, so many variations. Yeah. But for the base of, of uh, Birmingham and Alabama artists alike, the market has to be established by us respecting each other's boundaries and professionalism. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's but the I, only way. But see, but the biggest thing, too, I think that we have a lot in this entertainment industry are pretenders. There's a lot of pretenders yeah. because when you look at entertainment online, it looks so easy. Even if K1 never rapped a verse a day before in his life, we're yeah. just going to use that. But somebody shoot him a fast video, and he got somebody to produce it right, yeah. he going to look bigger than life. But that don't mean he knows shit about this business. Yeah, right. And he's going to act accordingly. When he go out in public, nine times out of ten, he's going to be arrogant as fuck. Yeah. Because he's been somewhere where he really ain't had no business being. Yeah. It's like starting school in the kindergarten, they skip you to the seventh grade. He ain't got no business there. Yeah, can you do one, two, three, four, five, and all that shit? Yeah, but can you really articulate a real business transaction? Nah, that's when you hear about the overcharge. That's when you hear the undercharge. That's when you hear it out. The, yeah, you leave you leave easily because like like a lot of stuff that I see on social media now, everybody talking about the numbers, the numbers, the numbers. But one thing I do know about them numbers, the numbers can be inflated, and they, and you can tell you got somebody with a hundred thousand. Followers with six likes, it don't it don't match. Yeah, it's like it's like a BBL and little legs. Yeah. It don't match, man. Even on BS side, but, but you still if you got if you got the popular popularity and the notoriety, you still want to be able to measure up to it when 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 somebody yeah. see you out here Shit, in yeah, public yeah. or when somebody hear your display. You know. I like what you and Sam explained. I know Sam got into a little bit about the music industry. Comedy, and I know you promote it. Explain to these young how, if they could go back to where we were coming up, having to do flyers and everything, how easy it is to promote themselves with social media. Yeah. I don't think they have a clue. Yeah. No, no. It's, it's no. like night and day, really. Yeah, yeah man. Like, because honestly, I think, you know, I may be a little biased to this, but I think from about 19, about 70, maybe 68 up to maybe about 95, maybe 2000 if you had great parents, that was like a super era because you got the knowledge to know how to put out flowers, walk the streets in the middle of the night, go in the club parking lot, go into all you can drinks, pushing flowers, having to go to people's shit to be able to network with them and show them that you was really out here. Your mouth, yeah. yeah, then if you had a little extra money, you bought your little radio, you had a little bit more money. You bought your little TV along with the flies and all that and word of mouth, text message, phone call, email blast. Now people can one stroke it. Well, I say three strokes. TikTok, Instagram, and uh, Facebook. Oh, and I forgot about Twitter. And you can just post them now, Snapchat. Yeah. And that's it, which is cool. But I think social media is getting to a point where they're not allowing a lot of that anymore. Because they know it was people around here making 18, 20, 30, 50, and 100,000 a month. They make these revenue. little more change to get into yeah, those channels. Yeah, they, 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 they slowly pulling mm -hmm. that away where it's like, okay, yeah, we'll give you the views, but it's harder to make money on that now. Yeah. So, yeah, so it, it's, it's definitely a different world, man. And, and I'm almost scared for a lot of them because they're falling for a lot of this okie doke, which is watering down the entertainment industry. 
So the people who for real is making them harder to for them to get money because you had seven clowns before you and now you the eighth. Hell, what would this man yeah. think? He think you're a clown too. And I, I still feel like you should show up in uh publicly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though you passed the time where, where you had to get out there and beat your feet more than what mm. you have to do now because it's a luxury now, don't get me wrong. If you, especially if you're sitting at the house, you waiting on shit to be cool before you start posting shit. Yeah. You, you missing out on the luxury that you have at being first or being yeah. flooding the market with what you got instead of waiting on something to look cool or be cool before, okay, I'm going to post it now. I'm going to like it now. I'm going to yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? You said something there. A lot of people so do that. Wait it's good get to show up. Likes, then you want to come in too because yeah. you want somebody to see your shit. It's good to show up. And, and, and um, you, uh, you can still come out to events. Don't 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 just wait till you get the personal invite or wait till you get on the show, and you haven't supported anything else. Now some support stuff and you just haven't made it around. Everybody can't make it to everything. Well, see, but see, but, you don't you don't you you know you're out here preaching to preaching to preaching. You got to real, come out, man. That's what it was song. all about. I have the a physicality, the rubbing shoulder. I have a few artists here in the city, whether it's comedy or the Southern Soul, because that's what I'm mainly pushing now. And I hear some of the artists, I, I invite everybody on all platforms, whether it's through Messenger, whether it's through text, whether it's through email. You done got it somewhere. And then I go to a lot of events. When people invite me to stuff, I go. Or even if I just see it online, I go. Man, I got tickets that I've never even used because I know it takes revenue to move it. But when I come to some of the artists, I say, man, you going to come check out the concert? Oh, man, I got to work. Well, first of all, he ain't asked me to date. So that right there, me being in this shit so long, I know you full of shit. Oh, man, I got to work. How you know you got to work? You don't know. He ain't asked to date. That's one. So I'm listening. And then those same artists that will never show up or nothing, they always got to work. But when they ask you about being on the show, yeah. how did you get off? Yeah. Did your manager just get nice now? Or was the business so slow where you can get off? Or you're not interested in supporting nobody else, but you still want to. All that stuff like that I look at, man, because I don't want nobody shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Not a goddamn thing. So it's like I want to work with you, but I want to see you be able to support others too. Because right. you got to be able to pay it forward, man. Right. It, and, and a lot of them, they're not with it. And it's like I ain't either. Uh, uh, share is support. A uh, like is even support. You know, it's yeah, minimal. I agree. It's minimal, but it's support. It, it counts, though. It, it counts, count, count, count. because I agree with what you said. A lot of people are working, mm. and I get it. But, you know, on certain apps, I ain't going to say which one, because then they'll know it. Certain apps will show you who look at your shit. Mm. Like, real time, I'll show you when we get off camera. But, yeah, I didn't see you, motherfucker. You know, some certain yeah. people. Yeah, it, 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 <laughs> it show like, you. It's just like life out there. Certain people into making shit cool, and certain, certain people into... Getting on some shit once it get cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, but you know, I was, everybody I was, can't make shit cool. Though. And the kidding part, I respect it all because yeah. I ain't gonna lie, I buy a lot of shit I don't like. Yeah. But I look at it like this all right, man, you work every day, sun up, sun down, sometime, and somebody come to you and they really legitimately trying to sell a product, man, I give you these 2025 $20, All I tell them, just pay it forward, dog. Mm. And most people are like, what, what, pay it forward, meaning that if somebody come to you, just don't stop the ball from rolling. Yeah. And that's good enough for me sometimes. But a lot of them, man, they, a lot of people come in this shit selfish. Or they look at some of the imagery of what they've been saying over the years that you got to stunt on a nigga. You got to show out. Yeah. You got to hire. Yeah, that ego yeah, to make Yeah, that's, that's the silly shit out here, man. And, and that mindset is going to have a lot of people out here broke. Yeah. You can replace that ego word, I think, with confidence and a lot of that and, 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 and come up with the product that you want. You know what I'm yeah. saying? A lot of that just, you know, just mean, you know, uh, keep your confidence, you know, where you need, where you want them at, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to, to proceed. Uh, and uh, I also want, you know, uh, let people know that there's an open for, uh, forum to, to come through, too. You know, of course, we reach out when we see people out there working. Mm -hmm. And uh, talents that that's that's quaking, you know what I'm saying? We ain't just waiting on you to be at the top of the game to call you up here to you know Bob Shop Story Podcast, man. Uh, we see you quaking a little bit. We gonna we gonna mess with you because we trying to make it mm -hmm. quake. You know what I'm saying? We trying to make it cool. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? We cool makers around here, man. And uh and we gonna mess with you. Just tap in. Sometimes we might have missed you. Or we might just not got around to hitting you up yet. 
tap in. You come through, man, and, 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 and sit down, chill out with us, and, and, and let us um and tell your story. But uh, you know, of course, uh, this is uh a podcast strictly on. Our mission statement is on inspiration. Is is what our uh, inspiration, what, information. Yes, sir. Inspiration yeah. and information, man. And uh, mm-hmm. we always trying to inspire the next. Uh, and, and inform the next, you know what I'm saying? And uh, mm-hmm. just make sure you're ready to do that when you come, man. But always, man, chime in, hit me up, hit B up, hit K1 up. Let us know, man, you want to come through and drop and drop some info on the people. Or you got something that people can be inspired by, man. I don't care what walk of life, talent. Uh, if, if, if it's something presentable, we'll check it out and we'll get with you. Oh, yeah. All right, and yes, then b- before we go too too much further, because I know we ain't got too much longer, you know, we but I think this conversation was definitely needed oh, about yeah. about how this independent thing could really work for some. And then remember this too with independent, he ain't got to be no millionaire to be balling. Yeah, right. Let's go ahead and straighten that shit out now. If you around here can pay bills off your talent, right. nigga, you balling. That's right. What Luke, what, what Luke just said, man. You balling, man. Luke, Luke says in beautiful shit about that shit, man. He, he said, hey, you better know what you're doing once you sign up for the big league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It ain't it, it, your life is no longer yours. Luke said he been go walk his dog or some shit like that. Some shit that you, <laughs> hey, you better know what you're doing. Hey, shit like shit that, you for granted. Hey, yeah. you, you take certain stuff for granted. Looking at somebody else with uh, what 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 uh, Daquan uh, said. Yeah, looking, looking at, at somebody else crawling. Daquan, we hey, <laughs> looking at another man crawling, boy, you be true. messed up. <laughs> That's true. My boy Daquan spits up then. Yep, now let me ask you this, Sam. I know it was, uh, and, you know, of course, I know we just really just dove right into it. We ain't asked no real live interview questions. All right, first of all, have you been in promotions? And if so, when did you get in it? And what inspired you to get in it? What's your background in this promotion thing? Yeah, we ain't right, even That's one I ain't know. That's one I ain't asked since I've been I mean, on here. Like, you know, I mean, I could have hung out with Oprah, Gail, nah. Montel, <laughs> motherfucking Archenio. I, no I could have been up there with them niggas. Ain't no doubt. I'm that nigga of Birmingham. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, man, shoot, in promotion, promo. Uh, I guess I'll always... Um, I ain't gonna say always, you know, of course, back in high school when we started diving in rap and, and, and going to the studio of JD House, Moham. Shout out to my partner, man. Uh, long time, that actually family. Uh, when we started going to JD uh, House back in the day, it was all about just, you know, rapping. Me personally, learning mm-hmm. about the studio and how to rap. Uh, at that time, a couple of my partners were way more advanced, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Peas, you know. Dude from the barber shop, uh, we called him Steel back then, Kingpin Basket K. But uh, <laughs> but uh, and and, and uh, Bingo for it, uh, all of you know, uh, Flip, Eric, man, we used to all be, be up in JD house, man, recording, and uh, we started back then in just rapping. Around what year that was, man? This this was uh, high school, man. So Uh-oh. had to be anywhere from '93. To till current, so you, know talking what I'm about, so you talking about? We've been around studio, yeah. We've been, I mean, still present. There's one yeah. right behind, behind this wall right here. Yeah, so uh, years. Studio I grew up in, Rock House Studio, Rock House University. Shout out, uh, Sonny is black is my partner, Sonny Black. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, man, uh, it started off back then, but just leading up from then to now. Um, not gonna give you my life story, but rapping. For me, started off back then and just being having the ear to music other than band, cause we all were, you know, band members too. Everybody I named previously. Yeah, what instrument uh, did you play in the band? I'm a trombone player. Trombone, man. okay, I'm yeah. Trombone See, player. he keeps skipping all this stuff. Time he was in the band, you know, I'm they got trombone know. player, man. They don't want to know what you play. Hey, I'm Mars and trombone, oh, yeah. 91 to 95, Woodland Colonel, man. And, 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 and the real brass. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, yeah, Brad I mean, Sessions. Quit trying to sit over there, man. I'm bringing it up now. Under the tutelage of Edward Y. Maddow, man. <laughs> and see, the reason why I said that, because that's another lost art. Mm. I remember, man, I'm an avid French horn player for yes, people sir. that know it. I stopped playing because it wasn't cool when I got to high school. Yeah. Like, it was, like, people still played it, but it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I don't play no yeah. instrument. And that's yeah. one, of the, one, one of the things that I kind of hate, I stopped. 
Cause I can still play it now if I really wanted that to. That margin print was going hard too. Now you know you're in concert, you ain't in margin. You ain't had the one, but you had the hand up and all that. You oh, yeah, had, you the, had the, the one, you one the like the trumpet with trumpet. the big bell though. But the so, funny, you know, but it, it, now no, E five played margin print. Pizza played margin French for a while. Pizza played baritone too though. He, he played a couple of instruments. But see, but when I played when I played French, that's when the school used to give you free instruments. No. Yeah. And they didn't have the march. So mm-hmm. when we did concert solos and all, you had that same one. Mm-hmm. So your ass had to know how to play. Then the mouthpiece, I know <laughs> you had to know how to play. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I hate that. That's why that's why I'm getting back into it now. So ain't nothing wrong with that. Hey, uh, uh, that bone, I ain't touched one since high school, but I still remember some things about it. So I probably pick it up and, and dibble with it for a little while. It'll come back. It wouldn't take long. It, it'll come back. Piano. Way back then, I ain't touched it in a while. Okay. But the only thing that made it cool for me, a lot of times I played by ear and all the latest songs. Yeah. I can play them. You can play them. That's mm. what made it cool. Yeah. That's a real I can't shit. play nothing on that piano, but I need love and that too soft, uh, that freaking tail. Uh, <laughs> da, 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 da. I can uh, play that now. <laughs> I need love now. That might have been the. Yeah, uh, yeah, Cool J supposed to be B now, man. Yeah. Like, I need love. Ain't no doubt. For real. But uh, yeah, I started from that with me and Fast mm-hmm. Forward through Rock House, the Rock House years, you know. Uh, uh, and. All the way, you know, and of course, barbering always kind of phased into it because I remember I sold CDs out of the shop always. You know, uh, they, the first place we marketed everything at before we beat the streets at night. And, uh, well, I you know, all the way was seen out, you know, moving around club to club, parking lot to parking lot. Sometimes I ain't go in, I was just outside. And, uh, Shit, me and my partner Wallace Jr. Now, they were going for show see that joke in the street. Oh, know, yeah. Wallace Jr. But, uh, Promo started with rapping with me. Yeah. You no, know, we promoted uh, one of uh, Birmingham J's first CDs with uh, Rock House Promotions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Birmingham J. So, uh, and we started promoting our own parties. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Our legendary party, spring break party down there. Got it, man. That ended in a, in a hooray. <laughs> well, we got it. Now, for but, y'all don't know who that was, that was the old French Quarter. Yeah, French Quarter was it changed yeah. its name. Yeah, you, know? you, got, you got for the old nigga, you got to say French Quarter, man. But. <laughs> It wound on up to there, man, all the way up till we uh, got into the house show, man. And we got into the promo in the house show. That was that was a, a, a bust in the chair wide open because we, all we knew house shows and beauty shows from, from on looking. We hadn't done yeah. them at the time we, we started out doing them. And uh, we promo from now and then uh, spent off from the house shows until promoting other artists, I gradually started phasing away from being in the studio and stuff as much myself because with Rock House, I was still mainly more promoting and doing a little managing and helping out on all that stuff more so than I was an uh, out front artist. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So I was getting that background work the whole time. And then uh, when we joined up on the house show, and then uh, you started doing the comedy, and, 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 and we started promoting. Um, before that, we was promoting other artists, mm-hmm. rap artists, you know what I'm saying, yeah. in the city. Rap, you know, R&B. all around the city, you know what I'm saying. If you seen flyers and posters on the pole, it probably was out there at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. You came out the club, see flyers, stuck to your woman in the rain, it probably was out yeah. there at 3 o'clock was, in the morning, you know so, what I'm saying? It was so gangster. That's where my promo started, at, man, in the nutshell. It was so gangster with those flyers and stuff, man, because I remember yeah. getting out, putting out flyers. And let's just say, we used to always look for the spot that was super packed. Yeah. It may sometimes be two of us. Yeah. Yeah, it was rare that it was just yeah. one, but it would be times that it was one. Man, we'll go out there and cover the whole lot. Yeah. I then mean, go had, in. We had got it inside an hour. Yeah. Okay, how pay? It can be two down cars. Shit, it's, it's man. Like four to five minutes, that'd be a couple. You just sit your mind, be like, you hit that way, you hit that just way. Just start walking. Way, Get you a pile of them and just start walking. Because yeah, yeah. you're standing up talking Shh. about it. You just wait for 10 minutes. You could have knocked it out. Watch some flyers. Just... social media. Yeah. Y'all had to wait on the right time yeah. to hit all the cars where you were talking Exactly, about. it was yeah. time. Waiting the right time of the day to hit that scene, but yeah. You had to know what night, yeah. what was jumping, what side of town, because you don't mm-hmm. Gas yeah, was high too now, cause we yeah. pro, we promoing when uh when Bush when was getting Bush ready to come out of office at Obama Bush, first year. That Bush gas was about five dollars, man. Yes, sir. That made me get rid of my old no, shit. That, that gas about four, four, five dollars, four, three, four dollars, easy, three fifty. And we was out there still moving from side to side, uh, side of town to side of town. 
Dub and fly, man, and uh, I mean the knowledge don't come from anywhere. It come from hands on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It come from doing it. You know what I'm saying? And, and so uh, when we sit here and, and, and talk about the experiences, it come from actually uh, out there making it happen, man, and, and, and trying to still stick around this thing, man, and, and enlighten. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. We can we can massively enlighten from this platform on some of the knowledge and stuff from the levels that we. Inquired mm -hmm. and, and know yep. about. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying they got no diddy money and all these folks, you know what I'm saying? No diddy. Dig it up, done. No, no diddy. No diddy. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, no diddling. No diddling around this You know what I'm saying? We ain't got that. We, ain't, we might not have been to that status of doing uh, 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 entertainment in the city, but hey, it, it's, been, it's been done and being done. But you see, know? but you know, I know a lot of people always talk about the money, and, I, and yep. of course I, I speak on it from time to time, but I think that you got 10, 15, 20 years worth of experience or something. Even if you're not a millionaire, you're a very valuable asset. Yep. Sometimes the money just ain't in your cars, but knowledge. I, I always say the knowledge, can you eat, can you pay a car note, can you pay a house note, can you pay off cars, houses, buy, and fund, fund that shit yep. yourself, you successful in it. Man. Everybody just ain't gonna make a billion or half a billion or or two hundred million. Some people just gonna make them two, three hundred thousand a year, and that is that, that the consistent hey, made money, yeah, man. Producers, DJs, bad. different people behind the scenes in this business that made money consistently throughout these years. Studio yep. owners, people that can just flip on the computer and, and, and know what to do on it. Flyer design, graphic yep. design, All people that have consistently made money here. Over the years with entertainment, the, the market just had to continue to be built. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We ain't going to push what's going on down here because it's a it always been bubbling. Yeah. But we trying to, you know, exceed the bubbling stage, you know what I'm saying, uh, in, 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 in trying times because the game changing, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, with, uh, with, with the Internet being around probably almost the last 25, 30 years almost now. Yeah. The game changing. They change. They're changing how you even access that. Yeah. So, so professionalism had to even step up even that much more. Even though you can just turn the phone on and feel like you right there where everybody else is. If you're not with them professionally, you ain't where they at. Yeah, that's true. You 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 just on camera. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You just have a song recorded. Yeah. But if you're not trying to do it professionally or learn. All you can about doing it professionally, whether it's through reading or watching stories that uh, 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 people who've been through it tell, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Accurate stories. Yeah. You know, you pretty much you you just on camera or you just being recorded. You you're not where they're at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Bob Shop Stories Podcast Episode One Them Zero Eight Entertainment Industry Independently. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, um, and I'm gonna tell you something that a lot of people they they discount too. Having a mentor, mm -hmm. actually working up under somebody, because even though you may come in over religious, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the word sensei. They've been doing it 30 years. They never went viral. They never just did it big, but they got a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. You come in with several hundred thousand followers, you shitting on them. That's the worst thing you can do. Take the tutelage and learn it and add it to your repertoire. That's yeah, right. And it, it can work for you. I see that a lot with a lot of artists. And it'd be sad because I'd be like, damn, man, it's hard to work with them because I don't want to fuss with you about something you don't know. Yeah. I don't want to debate with you about this shit. I want to see you win. Yeah. And in the process, I'm going to win, too. That just makes sense. Can't be too hard, too cool to learn. Yeah, and I, and I think now, you know, the era we're living in, everybody just tough. Yeah. Everybody want to be this tough guy, this tough chick, until all this shit hit the fan. Yeah. And it can be so much better. And I think going back to our city, Birmingham, this city here, I ain't gonna lie, this is an extremely talented city. I just think we haven't found a way collectively to just put a lot of the foolishness to the side yeah. and just say, man, let's just go ahead and get it. Yeah. And that's with the, the videographers, that's with the cameramen, yeah. that's with the comedians, that's with the rappers, the singers, the poets, that's yeah. with uh, the kick wormers, the mother who do the hula hoop fans, all that shit. Is all along those lines. Now there's a lot of dope people in that, but there's a lot of bullshitters amongst those groups, and it makes it hard because the bullshitter normally right. be the one who go first. Right. So now it looks like that's the representation of for, for what it is, and that ain't what it is in a lot of cases. All right.
speaking of comedy on your end, you did the tour for 35? Oh, yes, 35. 35? Yes, 35. Tour. How easy was that? You just have to go in, book yourself, or? Well, I mean, well to me, well, I. behind the scenes, it might look, well, out front it might look easy, but how easy was it? Well, it wasn't easy, but it was simple. Now, it sounds it sound the same, but it wasn't easy, but it was simple. And meaning that it was just certain steps you had to follow. Yeah, before I even started to, I looked at, honestly, I looked at about 15 cities first. I, I said it for 35 because that was a goal. But I started off with 15 cities I knew I could get. You know, and that came from with, a, with, a, with working with Terry and Melissa. So I ain't ashamed to say it. It was great working with them. So a lot of those cities and connections I got with working with them because I understood how, yes, I'm working with them, but I'm working for me too. Yeah. But I'm going to do the work for them, but I'm going to work for me too. Yeah. I ain't going nowhere and ain't going to work for me, shit. So uh, when I lined up those first 15 cities, the simple thing was, all right, man, how you going to do this? You got to have a fly for 15 cities. You got to have promotion for 15 cities. You got to have hotel rooms for 15 cities. Right. There's somebody go with you. How y'all going to accommodate that? that right. You got to have fuel for 15 cities. You have to know how to coordinate and say, okay, Cows. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, let's just say I'm in Huntsville. Uh, no, nah, I'm say, let's just say you're in Montgomery, Mobile, and Panama. You would do them back to back. The next weekend, I would do three more cities back to back so it could save gas. Every now and then, you may have a long shot because it just happened that way. But in most cases, it was logistics. It was simple, It was simple, but it wasn't easy. I ain't going to say it was easy, but it was simple because if you followed the rules on how you needed to set it up, yeah. major connections, it, it, was, it was just that simple to do that. People make it hard. Yeah, it will. Yeah, and then uh, a lot of cities I booked myself, too, out of my pocket. See, that broke up a lot of that bullshit, too. All that, what you can't do, and which I tell you, man, what you want for the building? Let's build. do it, yeah. Just, just give me the building. I'll make y'all a believer. Yeah. Like that, cool makers, man. Which was a huge yeah. risk in that, too. Because mm -hmm. you know, when you two, three, four hundred miles away, like people don't realize every hour is about 60 miles on the road. So if you 400 miles away, shit, you what? <laughs> you, you, you about, about eight, about seven miles away from them? Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? About six, seven miles away from mm -hmm. your where you gotta go. So how are you gonna promote in that market? Which means you got the humble, or excuse me, humble thine self Yo, to call whoever there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you gotta humble thine self and call whatever comedian, entertainer, promoter, female, male, whatever, and just talk to them. Let them know what you're doing. Let them know some conversation involved. Either you make an offer or you ask them what they want. To me, I tell you, make a reasonable offer. Most yeah. people take a reasonable offer, and it worked out. Yeah. But I wasn't scared to talk. I wasn't scared to say, hey, bro, look, hey, I want to come to this city, this city, and do this and do that. What are some venues available for me to rent? Yeah. So when you say that, they're like, damn, you trying to rent this shit? Yeah. Now it's like, what, 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 what you talking about? And if it all makes sense, most people kind of lead you yeah. to the ways you need to go. You just can't be no fuck nigga, man. You had to go back to face and do the leg. That's yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. We but still like talking like leg work. I still yeah. like that leg still work. Still talking leg work. When I, I did some radio interviews, because a few cities I bought radio, which took me way outside my budget. I ain't going to lie. But I wanted to do it just to say I done it. I ain't going to even yeah. lie. Some of it was like, it ain't really necessary, but it's necessary. Like in um, Dublin, Georgia, we did um, a theater. We did a motherfucker, the Dublin Theater. That's what it's called. And shit, we bought radio, did some interviews, met up with a guy down there, did a podcast with him. We did all kind of shit. And it was so interesting because when we threw it, it turned out a lot better than I thought. I mean, I knew it was going to be pretty good, but to see all them people in a theater, a theater, it was amazing. I ain't even going to lie. Like, it wasn't sold out. I ain't going to stand and say that. But it was nice enough where I can show that footage and be like, nigga, shit, that's what we want, nigga, shit. Yeah. It was nice. So it was like, it was just amazing, man. You know, the baby go around and like I did an interview in Dublin, Georgia. It's a five, four or five hour drive somewhere around. Well, I think it's four hours because it went up an hour Eastern time. Nigga, I drove out, did an interview and drove back the same day. The same Word. day. Word. You Word. know what? Let's see. Uh, do you think, okay, let me ask you something. Uh, 
because it, 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 that that type of sacrifice don't come from uh, not understanding that this is what it takes to get where you want to be in in the game. But but as as a as an overnight success, as a, a person that say, okay, uh, I went viral last week. Now people calling me, offering me such and such to come to a to a spot. You be holding, you, you, you be holding the knife from the sharp end. Yeah, because it's almost <laughs> like you don't know the value. It's gonna hurt. Because you just said you went a day before. I mean, what a week before a day. Uh, uh, to do the radio interview. Yeah, no, I drove down there the same day. Did an interview by by I think by noon, and did the interview. Ate lunch. The interview was about an upcoming show, though. Yeah. How far out? Yeah, in Dublin. Uh, the show was like maybe about three weeks out. Okay, but yeah. but I'm pretty sure. Uh, uh, I ain't gonna say I'm pretty sure, but was it in that budget for you to come do that? Yeah, it was. Okay, wait, was. wait, 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 wait. It the was. point I was gonna make null and void in that then because you actually have you worked it out yeah. to to get that 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 price in your budget. But would you have went and done that interview if you knew that interview needed to be done to make that show quick without it being in your budget? Yeah, I would have done it either or. Mm. because I just feel like man, when you're doing shows in other cities, it's nothing like. Going to the local spots and actually talking mm. to people that's mm. from them, because okay. like the dude, matter of fact, I'm gonna call him tomorrow. So it, uh, it basically there's a necessity to show up, yeah, and and just do that extra non obligated stuff sometimes. Yeah, it is. Even though that time you were obligated, because I yeah. was gonna make the point because I actually thought that I remember it when you left here that day mm -hmm. and came right back. Oh, yeah. I didn't know you were obligated. I knew you 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 talked to the people and and, and, and you told me you were gonna do it. And you committed to doing it, but I didn't know you. And that okay. was almost 10 hours on the road. But if, yeah. if it was in your deal, then that's that's yeah. more so obligation than I volunteered yeah. it. But It was almost 10 hours on the road that day, and I also did one in Little Rock like mm -hmm. that. But I spent a night there because that was six hours away. Yeah. But I would have drove that and drove back too if, if I had to yeah. because I feel shit. I'm about to be hooking to drive. Or at least <laughs> or at least shot you some audio or did yeah. or, or maybe yeah, did an online interview or, or something that that mm -hmm. that made that that you knew you was gonna do the extra leg work you need to do to make that show quick. Yeah. You weren't that going down there, man. I'm gonna sit back and, and wait on see what if they gonna make that bitch jump or not. Send my money, you know. Man, most places I go to sound. They do not know I'm the person who's actually putting on the show. Yeah. Like, I don't know, even know I'm a comedian. Like, it'd be so funny. Like, Felicia, shout out to comedian Felicia, comedian E. Johnson, and Jason Shorter. And they Charles Winston, too, because he caught a couple of them dates with us. When we used to go to the shows, and everybody sitting up, you know, everybody cracking and yeah. cackling. I'm sitting around there walking around like, hey, man. Uh, 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 Speaking man, on uh, the covering whole comedy yeah. tour, Bob Shop Stories, episode 108, man. That's right. That's right. Look for it on Tube. It coming real soon. The whole special. Didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, oh, no. uh, right, right yeah. back. But, yeah, but, so so it was like uh, a lot of time when I be moving around, folks don't know who I am on that show. I don't even try to make them know. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, – I remember, matter of fact, with your cousin. This one a little bit closer to home. Your cousin up in Indianapolis. Okay, when you went up to Indiana, yeah, your fam I, showed up. Shout out, family yeah. up in Indiana. Y'all yeah. showed up, showed out. I made the call. Oh, yeah. I had folks <laughs> that showed up up there. Indianapolis, Indiana, man. Oh, yeah. Shout out. Yeah, shout out to Sheree Cameron now. What yeah. happened? What up? Tony Cleveland, what's happening? Sister Tavis, what's happening? Cuz Elisha. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Ain't no doubt. Aisha the comedian, what's happening? Get fit with cuz. She don't play no game, though. You got to be ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so so when I went up there, your cousin. Now, we talked a few times. And because I know her, but I don't know her. But yeah. we talked a few times because you gave me the number. Then I talked to a comedian, uh, uh, Aisha. Mm -hmm. And it was like, they was very receptive. But it was like, a, this nigga finna come way up in the Indianapolis doing a show. Yeah. But what they didn't know, I had a map. I already lined it up. Like, in my bedroom, I'm gonna bring that map down here and just mark that shit off, because that shit fine to look at. I ain't gonna even lie. It looked very impressive, even if it don't mean shit. But it was almost like, they was like, okay, yeah, we welcome you, but it was almost like a, mm -hmm. all right, we ain't gonna tell you now, but all right. So when I got up there, it was a nice crowd. And man, do you know your cousin told me when I got on stage, she said, I did not know you did no comedy. I thought you were just 
presenting, presenting the, show. the show because yeah. you know I'm walking around the whole time making sure they're straight, doing the mic check and all that. Everybody else they cracking and all that. So when they did the show and then when they called me up, yeah, oh she they was, gonna show them show out. She was like, what, like, what, like when they called me up to stay when they got off stage, they bought shirts and all that shit, they yeah. covering the whole shirts and all that. Cause but they that, gonna show them show out. That fam now. And, and, and fun, uh, fun story about fam, man. Uh, back in late nineties, man, when they used to come down, man, we all was younger, of course. But uh, uh, back in the late nineties, when they used to come down, bro, do you know they actually from Indianapolis, Indiana, they they put me, us on Mr. Big down here, <laughs> me and some of my and we in we Take rapping that shit to try. down the street from. Them. <laughs> Take that shit to try all that shit. They put us on that. I had not even heard on the radio down here when they came down here. One of our family reunion bumping it. But hold on, hold on. My cousin Quilla. But hold up though. Uh, uh, my cousin Alicia. Hold my on, cousin on. Kiki. I uh, and my cousin Mike. Back in 1986, hey. I bought a Cadillac and put them things on that bit. Their brain blowed out with the white leather seat. Yeah. I'm gonna have to play that nah, shit. Nah, Mr. B started in 86. Yeah, 86. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, you had it right. Say, okay. I just said 96. You know, that was our era. Whatever. Ah, uh, but yeah. Uh, that Cousin them put us on that. Speaking of independent music, Cousin yeah. them, they said Mr. B came up there and rocked some show. My cousin Quita would tell him and, and, and say they got some tapes from that show and they was on Mr. Big ever since. They mm. came down here and put us on Mr. B. From Alabama. That, that's how it be sometimes. You know, sometimes. He was, up there, he was hot up there before he got hot down here. Well, sometimes you can't get and hot. People don't want to believe it. Hey, fact so, check me. Sometimes in your own state. Fact check me. It don't be that they don't support you. I'm going out on a limb saying this. It ain't that they don't support you. They just don't really believe because yeah. they never seen nobody that close to them make it. And I think that play a role because I done tried to sell people tickets to the show and they be like, Oh, you're going to be at the barber shop? I just swing by the barber shop. Mm. I'm like, no, you're not. Yeah, you no, that you're touch. Not. You that <laughs> you're not going to come by this yeah. motherfucker. But I, I understand it, though. Like, I don't even get offended. Like, my job is to inform. Like, I don't have people say, you not already told me. Well, if I don't tell you, I what you know. Yeah, right. And I just work it from there, man. But then, like we say all the time, you know, uh, 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 when you you from somewhere else in another city or town working, they looking at you like they believe in you because yeah. this joke out here on this road, yeah, regardless you in there or not. See, the indie game change up. If, if you ain't moving around, you wouldn't know it. But yeah. the indie game change up when you hit them, when you hit yeah. them, especially them smaller market. But the indie game change up anywhere you go. Because if I went to, I even say Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. You may have some folks that, yeah, yeah okay, in Birmingham and Atlanta, yeah, all right. But when you when you out there working, bro, no, you walking in command and respect. You you respect it because you out there on the road working, man. Yeah. Taking somebody that know it because because it's been done. Man, I ain't when lie. You, you can go Kentucky, Florida, anywhere across the United States. When you from out of town working, you walking in the room, professional, commanding the right respect, bro. You gonna get it. You gonna have haters everywhere. Yeah. But I think at home. You so reachable and touchable, man. Yeah. I can pull it right up on them, man. Come on, man. You, you, oh, you. Come on, man. man they pull mm -hmm. up on it. But when you out of town, they like this motherfucker seven miles what away. Is, I wonder where that nigga work beside this. You know what I'm saying? They looking yeah. at you like, how do they, how that nigga him? Yeah. You know that? Especially if you all through the week and all that moving Spend, around. Especially if you shop. No, you man. fuck around and shop, got a little <laughs> chain or something. But you Shit. can just be handling your business. Yeah. And you can be just that committed to what you're doing that you just getting that little sleep. Mm-hmm. No see, in the kidding part, I hear that all the time, though. You know, when folks be like, man, when do you sleep? Right, yeah. When I get tired? Yeah. <laughs> Shit, that's the best. That's the best ounce I can give you. Because, like, if I'm tired now, I don't give a fuck about coming to work in the morning if I'm sleeping. Yeah. But if I'm able to get up, I'm going to get up. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. that's just how I feel, man. It's either you do or you don't. Yeah, man. So, you know. It's real out there, man. It's real out there. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know, man. I guess in summer, because like I said, we can sit and talk about this all night. I ain't going to eat much lie. But I know. So many years, man. So many years of, of, of bumming and stomping around. You got three heads that been running around, you know, this thing for a long time sitting yeah. right here, man. Of course we yeah. can come up with something to talk about the yeah. Two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but see, but I, but I, but I ain't gonna lie. I admire, really can walk in here. I admire the struggle, so black. as people call it, the struggle. It ain't really the struggle. I think it's what's necessary to actually appreciate where you are. Yeah. And a lot of people simply don't appreciate why they are like where they are. Excuse me. 
like the, uh, I'm sure y'all done seen Where Are They Now? Yeah. You know, that they come on, I forgot on MTV, BT, one of them. And when you see the Where Are They Now, it's like, when I look at them, I'm like, damn, I remember when that was the biggest shit you could ever want to see. And one day, whew, and me being in this entertainment so long, I be like, somebody just ain't had that business taken care of. Right. You don't get that big and just die. Right. Nah. Nah, uh-uh. That's Some, that's somebody's that's shit wasn't together. That's all it was. Or somebody was. That's why you get it on you. Oh, yeah. It's quick, because I think, to me, I'd rather be independent, making a few hundred thousand dollars a year, and and, can, and just good, you know, and can and fund my own shit. Still got a little bit more control over your 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 say and your, how you move. Yeah, yeah. Bit. Instead of getting high, oh, yeah. that got to be a hard fall, because once everybody leave away from around you, you don't know where to go. Yeah. And, and, and man, I, I sure don't want to leave without getting a shout out to all the, all the people uh Especially that been out uh, out there since I was actively, you know, moving around uh, in music, and uh, and before I was even doing it, you know. Shout out to the ones that's still out there trying to make it thrive in, in the avenues and the corners and the cuts that you're sitting in. Cause I know y'all still out there pushing buttons. I know y'all still out there showing youngsters the way, making beats for them. Uh, shooting videos, you know what I'm saying? Just like we got the K-Onester up in this boy, man. The goat up in this boy with us, man. Been around for a long time. You got to say it properly. Uh, Z-Lens Media. Z-Lens Media yeah, is in the house right, with us, man. Because when you said K-1, he, he looked up at you. Yes, sir. He just stared at <laughs> Hey, 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 check him out on, 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 on this DJ channel, too, man. Y'all check that. DJ K-1? Y'all check him out, man. Hey, hey, he moving and grooving out there, man. But been, been around uh, longer. And as long as I have uh, in Birmingham and Alabama Entertainment, man, uh, been along, been around as long as both of us have. And everybody that's just out there making it still quake in the city, man, you know, bringing the youngsters along and telling them the right way, trying to gravitate them toward uh, where we didn't uh, accomplish and further, you know what I'm saying? And, and just keep doing it, man. We hear you. We see you. We wish you'd come tell your story and stop sitting back waiting on on, on us to uh, 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 be be on um, revolt somewhere, man. For y'all come <laughs> come support, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Holla at Bob Shop Story, man. Come tell your story, man. And, and it is a um, it is an open forum, man, for entertainers, politicians, yeah, all walks of life that's doing anything inspirational and informational. That's right. That's right. Well, hey, that's what it is, man. Hey, with that being said, I ain't got nothing else to say because I know it's getting late and I got to be back at 5 a.m. So uh, appreciate you tuning in to Barbershop Stories, the podcast, episode 108. Next week, we'll be at 109 with uh, with graphic designer Miss Queen Michelle and Miss Tiffany with TC Entertainment. They'll be here next week on the 10th. And I'm looking forward to them coming on in. Hope y'all tune oh, in. If right. not, I make sure I tell you so you can tune in and watch and see that we talking shit about you, man. Shout out to, uh, I got to shout out a couple folks in the city now. Everybody ain't going to shout out because everybody I can't think of right now. But the folks I can remember, I'm going to shout out. Shout out to G with GMC, man. Now, that's right. a fellow G. who been in it for a long time. That's a player that, player that do some of my flyers. Yes, sir. He do some of my print work. He worked with a lot of independent artists as well, so y'all make sure y'all check out. out Get Streets Radio. Shout out to Nicole Sherelle, man. She's a she's a hot up and coming poet in the city. She'll actually be on the show that'll be at the start on this Sunday, April the seventh, along with Spunky Robinson out of Miami, Cam Stevens out of Enterprise, Alabama, and uh, Destiny Pippen from Atlanta. She's from here, but by the way of Atlanta, or by the way of Birmingham, however you want to say it, but the motherfucker be here and the motherfucker be there. So we'll say that. Then uh, also, too, y'all make sure y'all check out all these upcoming shows, these independent shows. Do not stop. If you're not on this one, you might be on the next one. If you ain't the next one, you'll be on the next one, but you'll be on one of them. Everybody can't be on the same show, but I do fuck with the independents. You don't believe me? Just watch. Right. Just like Trinidad James said. But yeah, and then uh, April the 24th, that's a Wednesday, got the homie um, Eddie Green coming from Palm Beach. Got Sheila, she's from here. And I also got my partner Skeeter G from Virginia. So hey, Indeed. that's going to be a great show. Great, great show. Shout out to Drika, the Eyelash Diva. Shout out to Jason Shorter, 
comedian Felicia Charles Family. Winston. Shout out to Big E. Man, I'm talking about so many folks to shout out, man. Shout out to DJ Dane. Shout out to DJ Youngblood. Shout out to Bruce from the start on. Shout out to Good Sam and No No. Scooter Groove. Rock House Records, a.k.a. With Sam uh, Jade. That's right, man. It's, I'm it's, the Dun Dada, duh, man. We see you. That's right. Shout out to Dun P. Dun P, man. That's the fella there, man. He, he one of my partners. Been knowing him since middle school. He hooked me up on a lot of my flights, hotel rooms, run a car, all that stuff like that be needed. So, you know, and of course, we, we do excellent business, and I'm looking forward to doing some more excellent business, and we'll, we'll rise together. You know, shout out to Z Lens Media for making us look good on the camera. Y'all see that shit back yeah, there? Man, no you know doubt, what I'm saying? No making doubt. niggas look like I done exfoliated my skin around that bitch. But yeah, man, so shout out to that, man, and all. Uh, y'all make sure y'all stay tuned and all that. Hey, then too, look forward to Drika's high fashion show. It's coming up in the fall, and also look up to Trinika. Show Trap Fashion. That's coming up this month. So y'all look for the promotion on that. And uh, even the stuff I'm a part of, I'm going to push it. The stuff I ain't a part of, hey, I don't mind pushing that too. We're in the same network because that's what it's about. Each one teach, one push, one push, one pay it full, however you want to say it, man. Hey, we all got to make it somehow. Why not be the boost in the back to help somebody make it, man? It might come back and get you. So with that being said, y'all make sure y'all go to BennyMac205.com. You can see all the shows, all the events, and you'll see everything. But don't forget, this Saturday, Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas at the Jordan Ranch. Sunday, live at the start on. Boom. Go ahead and get them tickets now. So with that being said, I am out. Anything else you love? You want to leave me with, Sam? Hey, let's get them attitudes right, man. Attack that thing wildly. Be professional, man. Find a full Saturday. Well, I'll let y'all, man. RTR. <laughs>